session management from the perspective of OWASP, uh, Application Security Verification Standard number 4.03. So this, as I've said in previous videos, comes from October 2021. So this is the version that we're actually looking at. And in previous videos, I've looked into V2 and V1. V2 was about authentication and now V3 is going to be about session management. We're going to look at the controls or verifications that someone that an application should have if they are to be comply compliant from a security perspective so we we're talking about three different levels of verification l1 l2 l3 and as i've said i've gone in deeper detail in previous videos in this series so you might want to check that out l1 and l2 is for generic applications while l3 is important when it comes to applications such as those that deal with sensitive information such as banking applications such as medical applications and so on and so forth and uh, we're going to talk about it from the perspective we're going to look at it from the perspective of a penetration tester which is the perspective that i have the most experience with and also maybe looking into it from the perspective of someone who has an application or a company, someone who has a company or maybe a company with an application and wants to be complied, uh, compliant from a security perspective in the eyes of OWASP, which is a highly respected organization. Control objective. One of the core components of any web-based application or stateful API is the mechanism by which controls it controls and maintains the state for a user or device interacting with it. Now, let me actually reduce the size of the marker here. Interacting with it controls and maintains the state for a user or device. Now, what are we talking about when when we're saying state here so how is the application perceiving the user and most often than not that involves session management which changes a stateless protocol to a stateful which is critical for differentiating different users or devices so if you have an application with general level users with premium users with gold users and so on and so forth, the application needs to have a mechanism by which they can differentiate between these types of users. Ensure that a verified application satisfies the following high-level session management requirements. So let's see. Let me just zoom out of this a little bit. We're talking about V3 session management. And in this situation, Let's see how many uh, subsections does the V3 have. It has 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then we go into access control. So it is likely that I'm not going to be able to go through all of these in one video because I'm intending to keep it in the bulk of in the ballpark of uh, maybe 10 to 15 minutes, maybe shorter this time, because I realized that uh, the attention span for these videos is sort of like not very high, uh, which is why it is what it is. Now, we're saying that sessions are unique to each individual and cannot be guessed or shared. Let me delete this. Sessions are invalidated when no longer required and timed out during periods of inactivity. And this is very likely the case for a lot of applications that I'm testing. Very likely not the case. <laughs> so they aren't very compliant from this perspective. I am seeing a lot of applications that do not invalidate the session when a user logs out or do not invalidate one session, the non-active session, when a user logs in from a different browser, which is not necessarily a bad situation because if you have a, a user, let's say, for example, that is logged in from a mobile 
application and they're also logged in the application from a web from the web it is often that the user wants to maintain active both states in that situation you would like to allow the user to have a place where they can see so such as in the user cp in the user control panel they should have a section where they can see all their active sessions and choose whether or not they want to log out uh, of any of those. However, uh, I'm seeing a lot of situations, as I said, when uh, the session is not invalidated when the user logs out. And that is an issue. You should not have, when the user logs out their active session, those session tokens should be invalidated. That is a must. As noted previously, these requirements have been adapted to be a compliance subset of selected NIST 863B controls focused around common threats and common exploited authentication weaknesses. Now let's see, let's go into the nitty gritty. V3.1, fundamental session management security. What verifications you need to do? Verify that application never reveals session token in URL parameters. And I'm laughing at this because I'm seeing this a lot. Applications often... So let me rephrase it. Poorly designed applications often reveal session tokens in URLs, which is a bad thing to do. Never reveal session tokens in URL parameters. So if you're a penetration tester and you're doing a penetration test, look into this. If you're seeing issues, put it in the report. Of course, with this would not be the case um, if um, you're a bug bounty hunter because nobody's going to actually take you seriously when you're reporting things of such because most situations are dealt beforehand by penetration testers which is why which is the main reason I don't focus on bug bounties except uh, I'm doing a little bit of them here and there on Cynac, which have a very good system of uh, preventing the user or preventing the researcher to submit duplicates. So if you're on Cynac, it is very least likely for you to submit a duplicate. They're very transparent about it, of course. Uh, they're very, very high standards when it comes to the uh, types of um, reports that they are receiving. But I digress. VAR V, V, V 3.2 session binding. Verify the application generates a new session token on a user authentication. And this is for all three levels of compliance. Verify that session token possesses at least 60 feet four bits of entropy now this might not be easy to uh, verify on l1 applications unless you have access to the source code verify that application only stores session tokens in the browser using secure methods such as appropriately secured cookies c section 3.4 Four, or HTML5 session storage. Verify that session tokens are generated using approved cryptographic algorithms. So if you want to be very granular, and this, this applies only for L2 and L3. So if you want to be very granular, if you've gone through the entire application and you don't see any issues, you could open up the ASVS. So if you don't find serious issues and look more granular into each of these as they are described here on uh, v3.2 session binding session termination verify that logout and expiration invalidate the session token such that the back button or a downstream relying party does not resume an authenticated session including across relying parties so again 
this goes back to 3.11 but with the caveat that one trick or not necessarily trick because a lot of people know about it one thing that you can do is you log out of the application as a penetration tester and then you click the back button to see whether or not your application resumes the previously supposedly invalidated session if that's the situation if you're be if you're able to access uh, on if you're able to access whatever authenticated feature you have accessed while authenticated when you click the back button after you've been logged out that's an issue that you need to include in the report if authenticators permit users to remain logged in verify that re-authentication occurs periodically both when actively used or an after idle period so for example i'm seeing a lot of good practice in some of the applications when they um, refresh or renew the session token every once in a while maybe every every 10 15 20 minutes of course you can see this in the back end if you're using a, a web proxy such as burp suite for example you can see the requests that are made to renew or refresh renew or refresh the session token but if you're a general user and you're only interacting with the application through the browser you might not be able to perceive those kind of finances unless they're very obvious all right for l1 30 days for l2 and l3 12 hours 12 hours or 15 30 or 15 minutes of inactivity two-factor authentication which is optional however for highly secured or highly sensitive applications for l3 15 sessions of inactivity with two-factor authentication and i'm seeing this in banking applications which is a good practice 333 three, three. verify that the application gives the option to terminate all other active sessions as i was saying after a successful password change so i wasn't actually saying this but when you successfully change your password all other active sessions should not be should be inactivated and that this is effective across the application federated login and any relying parties now if you're someone like google for example which i've seen as i uh, periodically change my password they probably have some mechanisms in which they do have mechanisms such as biometrics where they do not actually invalidate your all other active sessions such as your mobile session your all across all applications all the time they actually just do one or two verifications but like biometric verification but when it comes to other applications for example it is a good practice so as a penetration tester make sure to check that if you change the password and you have multiple active sessions across different devices or browsers all those sessions are terminated as your password has successfully changed so good things to fill the report with verify that users are able to view and log out of any or all current active sessions and devices so as i was telling you previously about the feature in the user cp where they can view all of their active sessions and decide whether or not they want to log out of them that is a good measure of practice and i would say that not necessarily for l2 but most specifically and most importantly for l3 applications all right so i think we're gonna just stop here and move with v3 4 and the rest of them in the next video